hello and welcome to this thought for the day from the Chapels Royal, Her Majesty's Palace and Fortress, the Tower of London. Greetings and good health to you wherever you are. Today is Tuesday the 13th of July 2021. You will be aware that the walls of the Tower of London are extremely thick, designed to keep things out. Even so, news has succeeded in penetrating these hallowed precincts, news of a certain match of football. Now, I, I know what some of you will be thinking. What is this football of which he speaks? It is wise to begin reflections such as these by defining our terms. So for the benefit of those of you unfamiliar with this word, I turn to the Oxford English Dictionary or OED. It offers me the following. Football, one, an inflated ball used in the game of the same name. It consists of an inflated bag or bladder enclosed in a leather case. Two, an open air game played with this ball by two sides, each of which endeavors to kick or carry the ball to the goal of the other side. So with thanks and acknowledgements to the OED, now you know. I hope you will permit me a slight digression at this point. In fact, you have little choice in the matter, such is the tyranny of these talks. The particular match to which I refer involved the variant of football, known as association football or soccer. There are strict rules in soccer about not allowing the ball to touch the hand or arm. Now you may recall that the OED definition described football as an open air game played by two sides, each of which endeavors to kick or carry the ball to the goal of the other side. Kick or carry. Most of us are fortunate enough to have the use of our hands and arms. When bringing home the shopping or moving suitcases, uh, when going on holiday, we make use of our upper limbs for the purpose for which they have evolved, that of lifting, carrying, or manipulating objects rather than kicking them along the pavement. So it's always seemed perverse to me to create a game in which you are denied the use of your hands to convey the ball across the line. We might as well invent a game in which you have to cover a certain distance in the shortest possible time, but without walking or running. Actually, such a game exists. It's called a sack race. My own preferred version of football is rugby in which the whole body is allowed to play its part in conveying that leather encased inflated bladder across the goal line. By way of analogy, rugby is to soccer as classical ballet is to river dance. End of digression, you will be pleased to know. So back to our definition of football. An open air game played by two sides, each of which endeavors to kick or carry the ball to the goal of the other side. The first thing to say is that to my certain knowledge, football is played not only outdoors, but also indoors. So I would have to question the definition on that point. Of course, this is the Oxford English Dictionary and they don't get out much. More importantly, you may have been struck, as I was, by not only the dryness, but also the inadequacy of the definition. This brings me to an important distinction, which I think we need to bear in mind when forming our views of the world and our use of one little word which can make significant difference. I'll come back to that little word later. The important distinction that I want to make is between simplification and reductionism. Simplification and reductionism. Simplification is useful. It helps us to work out the essence of things, what it is they really are or should be. We learn this in arithmetic and mathematics. We should think it odd if someone said to us, would you like four eighths of my cake? Whilst accurate, that is over complex. So we naturally simplify it to one half, half of my cake not four over eight, but one over two, lowest common denominator, highest common factor. Similarly, if we sleep on average eight hours a night, then we speak of spending a third of our lives asleep, not eight 24ths. 
William of Ockham enjoined us not to multiply entities, which is to say that we should not overcomplicate things, but always strive to bring them to their simplest state. The so-called Occam's razor is about attaining clarity through simplification. In arithmetic, we talk about reducing expressions to their simplest terms. So there's nothing wrong with reduction in itself, and we'd be in a pretty pickle without it. But what we do need to guard against is reductionism. How to spot the difference? It's that pesky little word that I trailed before, the word just. So if I say to you that football is a game played by two sides, each of which endeavours to kick the ball to the goal of the other side, I doubt that you will have a problem with that simplification. But I rather think that you will cry foul if I say that football is just a game played by two sides, each of which endeavours to kick the ball to the goal of the other side. No, you will cry, football is much more than that. It is a sport which gives pleasure to millions. It encourages people to get out and take exercise. In taking such exercise, they build up relationships with other people. Through playing and following their clubs, people develop deep loyalties which go down through generations in the same families. Football enables friendly rivalry and the sublimation of political hostilities between regions and nations. It provides opportunities for people from deprived or damaged backgrounds to realize their potential and to earn a living. It eliminates racial and religious distinctions when what matters is footballing prowess. It establishes respect for rules of fair play and respect for the arbitrator or referee. As Canon Roger Hall remarked here recently, it can and should inculcate habits of magnanimity in victory and graciousness in defeat. I could go on in the same vein, and so could you. Reductionism would have none of this. Reductionism is an expression of cramped minds which wish to dismiss things of which they do not approve or which do not happen to excite them as they excite others. It is no more true that football is just a game played by two sides, each of which endeavours to kick the ball to the goal of the other side, then it is true that football fans are just unthinking followers of overpaid athletes. The effect of willful reductionism is to write off or dismiss things that we don't like. Back to the OED. How about this definition? Action or conduct indicating a belief in a reverence for and desire to please, a divine ruling power, the exercise or practice of rites or observances implying this. That is the OED definition of religion. As a piece of simplification and clarification, I have no quarrel with it. But how would you feel if I said that religion is just? Action or conduct indicating a belief in reverence for and desire to please the divine ruling power, the exercise or practice of rites or observances implying this. That's it. Such a reductionist description would, for a Christian, leave out the sense of personal commitment to a saviour who was born as one of us, died for us, and rose again to redeem us. It would omit 2,000 years of history, of harmony and conflict, of glory and shame, of heroism and hatred. It would not mention the countless sacrifices made by Christians on behalf of others in relieving poverty, aiding the sick, promoting social justice, relieving prisoners and advancing human dignity. In the context of the present pandemic, it would fail to note the immense mobilization of Christian communities to feed the hungry, comfort the lonely and support the health authorities, and that in this country alone. I remember a slogan used by an organization that is opposed to all forms of expression of faith. It goes like this. Religion is just humanity's attempt to communicate with the weather. It is neat. It is clever. It is witty. But it is profoundly wrong and born of a reductionist way of thinking which seeks to belittle or dismiss someone else's point of view and even their most dearly held beliefs. Such reductionism is corrosive of human relationships and threatens the maintenance of tolerant society. We Christians have disagreements between ourselves. Some of those disagreements are profound. We may find the behavior of some fellow Christians incompatible with what we understand to be our common faith. We should not be afraid to engage in robust debate. 
But let us always beware of reductionism and check ourselves when we hear ourselves using the just word about others' points of view. It's usually inappropriate and always unhelpful. And now I am off to estivate. Estivation is the summer equivalent of hibernation. The OED defines to estivate as to spend a hot or dry period in a prolonged state of torpor or dormancy. This summer, that'll be me. All the best.